Hello, Salam Alaikum. Kif Halkum. Good morning. Okay, 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 this is me, Majid Slimani again. And I hope this is going to be my last, what do you call it, uh, video conference or video in, in video about this things that I've been saying all these years, continuously repeating them and saying them. It's just like a brick wall, hitting your head with a brick wall. Nobody cares, nobody bothers. You are just uh, hurting yourself only and making your head uh, painful and red. It is very sad, really, very sad that uh, things have reached such a bad status, bad situation we are now facing. And I think, frankly, I think the way we are moving now is going to be even worse. Even worse. We watch in the TV, in the news, now we see that even uh, there's a danger of big, big, a real big war in the Gulf, of the, and that is between Iran and Israel through Syria. Things are going so bad, very bad. And there is no more compassion, there is no more iman, there is no more taqwa, there is no more consideration, there is no more tolerance, there is nothing. Like I have posted in my article here, okay, that everybody is concentrated on money, getting money, money, shortcuts, there's no right, there's no fairness, there is no laissez faire, there is nothing. Everybody is looking for money. And whichever way they will get it, they will go. It's like going after a stone and looking for blood in a stone. Nobody cares, nobody bothers. And they, the whole rigmaroles are kept repeating day in, in, day out. Nobody cares about the poor person, the poor, the, the fakir, the unemployed. The mosquitoes, those with no money, no aid. The whole system is built only to support and uh, preserve uh, the role and the status of those with money and those with waster, but nothing else. It's very sad. And it, 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 it has reached a rich stage, and I think the way things are going, is it, I don't know what's going to happen next, because every, every place you go is... When police, when police, when are the police, when are the police? Then so all people know. When are the police? Nobody cares about the situation, about the, the facts, about the situation, or what happened. Or, nobody cares. My case now has been going more than two and a half years. I'm getting sicker and sicker every day. And, and for, for, for a company that collapsed 17 years ago, 17 years ago, 17 years ago, and the circumstances are well known. Everybody knows how the company collapsed and how I lost so much money. Where will I have money? I, I gave my car. The only thing I had which I could do a release of, my Yukon, it has been lying there in the court for six months. It cannot be sold. It's still there lying there, you know. The car is getting dust and maybe in the end it will be sold off at a very low price. And a bank that has got so much money, it has got so much money that they can even give loans to big companies like PDO. You know, they are after the pensioner, the poor pensioner, who has no money. After him, not terrorizing, but okay, you are looking for your rights, but then you have also to look at the facts. Where is the money? Where, where is the money? Where will I get the money to give you? I don't have money. If I had money, you think I'll be waiting for you all these years and the struggle and pain just to keep the money with me? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that person. If I were, I would have been a very rich person in PDO. I had a budget in PDO of 13 million US dollars by year. 13 million. And one signature, only one signature. And I, I could, I could uh, pay staff until 15,000 real money. One signature. I could pay a contractor until $150,000. One signature. Not two signatures. One signature. Why had the signature? And I never took any, even one basis. Even one, one cent. And one time, I remember that uh, we, we, by mistake, we paid an employee, I mean, one of the contractors. 
he did his demand was 16,000 and uh, and uh, we asked for them to give us a credit note and uh, this man uh, the general manager of the company came in to me in privacy said how much you want from the 16,000 9,000 okay for you and I said don't talk to me ever again like that if you do I'm going to report you to the management and we will never give you any more business don't talk to me like that I am not that type of person. When I opened my consultancy, we ordered for a stationery. And this, uh, this guy he comes to the office with a, what they call it, a pro forma invoice, and with a stamp and another form, for, for, what do you call it, uh, blank forms, and he asked me, the, the, the stationery you want is only 900 reals. But if you want, I can make it more. Do you tell me how much more I want? Then, then I told him, why I should make it more? This is my consultancy. And then the Indian assistant who was with me, she said, oh, you know, they're talking in Hindi. And I just listened. He said, oh, you don't you know that it is his company? And I said, no, I didn't know. I thought he is only working here. It's not his company. So these things happened in, okay, maybe 15 years ago or 10 years ago. But they're still, I, am, I understand they may be still working, you know. The big scandals of corruption and bribery that we had of in the PDO and all those things. And so many places, some are not, nobody knows what's going on. So much hidden it is. And we are terrorizing just the poor Fakir guy of a skin pensioner who is who is struggling for a salary of nine hundred and fifty years. He has paying already three and fifty years for the instrument of his car. He left his six hundred or five hundred, five fifty pending. And he has to pay the housemaid, he has to do he has to pay the city, he has to pay the water, he has to pay so many things. And he, and he has a social obligation and, re, and the, what do you call it, uh, requirements. Not only here in Oman, in home village, but even in Tanzania and other places. And uh, terrorizing, uh, pushing people, terrorizing. Okay, what, 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 what you will get from this? Are you not afraid of Allah? Are you not afraid of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who came specifically to talk to the us Arabs about being going doing things, things which are the, the, the right way, the right path? You are not nobody cares, nobody was bothers. Everybody money, 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 flus, flus, when flus, when flus. Nobody cares. It is very sad, really, Allah. It is so sad. I don't know what to do, really, because I'm getting sicker and sicker every day. Now I'm, I'm using oxygen to survive. In the morning, I, I have to use oxygen not more than two hours break. At night, I'm using oxygen mask. I have a, I, I did a prostate operation, and uh, it looks like it's coming back. I have urine problems. I'm now wearing urine bags. And still nobody cares. My driving license expired since November. My ID card is going to expire in six months' time. And nobody cares. I have been trying to contact people to ask, even the VIPs, even His Excellencies. You know, nobody, even they don't even receive the phone call. They see your number, nobody picks the phone. You send WhatsApp message or MS Word, I mean the word messages, nobody replies. What is this? What is going on here, Rabbi Jama? Are you not afraid of Allah? Are you not afraid of fury and anger from Allah? Are you not afraid that one day we are going to be accountable? What, whatever you do in life, whether it is your action or your inaction, you are going to be masul. Are you not afraid of a double qabr? Are you not afraid of a double dunya? Are you not afraid of when you meet Allah in the day of judgment on Yom al -Qiyama? You are not afraid of this? Nothing, nothing afraid, nothing scares you, nothing. For you, money it is only money, position, status, money, position, status. Now, poor person, my skin is always terrified, is afraid. Even if somebody knocks on the door, he's scared, don't look who is coming. What is this? Oh, how long these things will go on? Like and who, who is caring? Now, where is our leadership? Our leadership, where are they looking for people, people young, people now, they're making trouble, they're making all cries and demonstration and all this, asking for jobs and all this. Every day, the, 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 in houses, there are people, young people, they are there, they have no jobs. No, they are looking for jobs. You go in the companies, nobody's recruiting, nobody's recruiting. 
and every day you see in the newspaper like uh, the Oman Daily News Observer, uh, Times of Oman and uh, Muscat Daily, you see people advertising in my whole uh, looking for jobs, people who have come to Oman on visit visas and they're looking for jobs. Yeah, and uh, and so many places, every day, two pages, three pages, people looking for jobs. And where where will the young people who get who get the jobs? He, he comes with the he Sanaya Amma. Don't forget about it. Nobody bothers about the Sanaya Amma. Even a job of selling fish, they won't give you. You know, this, uh, do you have a diploma? They say oh, your English is poor, or oh, I don't know, you don't have this, or you don't have experience. It's a story of the chicken and egg. I wrote this article, not two zero zero three, the chicken and egg story, part one and part two. It is there. It, it, they are there in my book, Between Us Only. You can read it. It was my first book. I wrote this in 2003. And I ended up being troubled. People were asking, why are you washing your dirty, our dirty linen in public? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you, why you want to give fight to our outsiders? Why you want to do this? Why you want to do that? Nobody wants to hear the truth. You know? When, when, when uh, everybody wants you to put the dirt the, the, the under the carpet and keep quiet, don't say anything. My career in PDO and I was targeted because I, 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 I talked about things in 2000, I mean 1970s, 1980s, and everybody thought I was crazy. Mandazim, anyway, Mafi Mukha, Majunun, other. Majunun. I remember one day I asked my, my boss, English guy, I told him, why don't we put advertisement in the newspaper saying that uh, PDO is uh, congratulating his majesty like this? And I said, no, 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 we are in the business, so we are not in the business for this social. That's what he said. This is what he said. He said uh, and uh, when, I, when I went to visit Marmul, you know, one of those. Uh, one of my colleagues made a joke, made a mischief on me. He was telling the, the local people. He said, "Here tomorrow, to, uh, today is coming a very big person, a char from PDO. He was just making mascara, and his wife is Yemeni. He's, he's, he, he's, my wife is Yemen, ex ethnicity from Yemen, but she's not Mahara. I don't know Jebali. So his wife is also from the Janub. And all these big uh, sheikhs came to, to 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 my office, invited me to go to to the to the uh, Village Xiaomi and all this place, and then I went and I saw. I saw this uh, school. The roof has fallen down. The blackboard is down. The ch- there are only four, five chairs. The rest of the children are sitting on the mat. You know, this was in 1974, no, 76 or 78, 1970s anyway. And um, when I came back to my office in uh, in Minafal. For Marmul, I wrote a note. I said, "Why can't PDO help these people from the villages?" The guy was telling me, "What difference we have in our lives? We have nothing. Only the dust, the trucks pass through our villages, leaving dust behind. Our camels confuse the water, brackish water, with the water, and they die, and things like this." You know. And, uh, and when I said it, everybody thought I was mad. And the guy said, "Look, look! He went only one day to Marmul, and he's writing notes." And sarcastically and all this, you know, when, when there was a problem about uh, Saddam Hussein when he invaded Kuwait and it was given deadline of 15 January, they called a management meeting and I was in one of the August meeting. When I was there, they, they, they said, what we, what we, we want to hear your opinion of you people senior in, in the company. What do you think? So everybody said, oh, no, no, Saddam Hussein is not crazy. He's going to pull out before 15 January. And he's not crazy. He knows that what is at stake. And I was the only one who said, "Let's pre- let's be prepared for what there's going to be a war, and let's 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 listen to our staff. Those who want to leave, those who are, who are, who are not uh, who don't feel secure, they want to leave. Let's arrange for their bookings and flights." And everybody in the meeting, including my peers and men, you all jump on me. And my boss said, "They said, hey, hey, you, you, everybody knows you are against the expatriate." Yeah, you think people don't know. Now this is your chance to show off. And I kept quiet. I was the most unhappy person that day. I even feel like committing suicide. Allah love them. I'm not joking. I felt so sad. When I went home, my 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 wife 
and me had a big fight, the biggest fight we had at the time. I even I was about to beat my own small young daughter, you know, because she was looking for a compass box. And my, my, my daughter was asking, or was telling my wife, I said, why Baba is doing this? He doesn't have to re-ask for the compass box. Why is he shouting at me like this? You know? And then what happened? When, when, it, when, when I was sitting in my house, when I was in my house at around 2 o'clock at night, this my brother-in-law, Mr. Badr Mazuri, is working on Montel. He was part of the security meeting, um, security committee, I don't know. And he called me. He said, uh, Majid, yeah, do you have the number of uh, the MD of PDU? I said, I have his residence number I can give you. I said, no, no, no. We want his personal mobile, I mean GSM mobile number. I said, I don't have his number, but I can give you the number of my director, HR director. You can contact him and maybe he will give you. And then this, uh, this guy calls me and says, hey, you, no, no. Now I know that you're working in security. How did you know that uh, there was going to be a war? How did you know? I say, what do I work in security? I work in security. I, I feel proud to work in security if they need my services. But it's not a question of that. See the sarcastic the mentality of people. And then uh, when I went in the morning, this was the English guy, the one who was shouting at me and screaming to me and say, oh, you, you, had, you are always against expert and now you have, your, you have a field day. So when I was there, he said, he came to the office, he wouldn't believe it. He had a green, a red shoe and a black shoe, socks different, everything. He was really upset mental in the office and he was running like crazy. And he said, he said to me, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, I don't do anything from you. Don't, don't, don't open your mouth to me. And I kept quiet. In my heart I was laughing. I said, more, you will see more of this. More. And then there came all these people from the British Embassy, American Embassy, because they, at the time I was in charge of housing, so they wanted to know where, where people are staying and all these things, you know. It's a, I don't go to detail, say that it's security matters. But anyway, I, I, I was sitting with them, and they, 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 they made sure they brought one English lady to stay with me, because they, to make sure that I don't talk any things extra, out, out, of the, out, of, out of cuff, I don't know, whatever they call it. So uh, this lady, her name was Christine, she was sitting with me. And um, I'm asking, why are you, Christine, why are you here? He said, oh, because management told me to be to stay with you, to help you. To help me what? Just to watch me what I'm saying, you know? These are officials from the embassy, American, British embassy, and uh, I don't know, some European countries, you know, they, they were meeting with me and talking, you know, and because of the, the situation in the residency. Then, then one day, over the, over, one of these British guys came to me on my side there. Uh, he said, I apologize on their behalf. I apologize. You are a sincere person, a good person. These things should not happen to you. I have been told, I have done my own investigation and I have been told. You are a very sincere person, you are honest and say you speak the truth. You call a spade a spade. You are not against management. You are not for men, for the staff. You are you you see what is right and you go for it, and you are always your intention is always good and sincere. Please forgive forgive us for this what what is happening to you. And I, and then I said no because I told him three days ago and I told him the story and he was so sad. He he hugged me and said, "Don't worry, go because you are you are Muslim. I'm Christian." But I was brought up in a missionary, and he said, he said to me, he said, God knows your heart. He says, don't worry, God, you, you, you only be worried about the Meccan, nobody else. Alakul Hal, this is my story. Alhamdulillah, shukur Allah. I don't know, this is mitan from Allah, my exams, and I'm taking it, and I'm one day, inshallah, Allah will take me out from every day I'm praying. Alakul Hal, this is my story. And I don't know what else to say after this. I say, Alhamdulillah, shukur Allah. Ya hayyuk yub, la ilaha illallah. Anta subhanaka. Inni kuntu min al-dhalimin. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'matu akhil. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'matu akhil. Ma salama. Goodbye. End.